place I'd rather be And it has just you and me All in all is that I had it up to here with where I am And it started off a little change of plan For you There's a place I'd rather go Where it is I do not know all I know is that I'm Tell me about the tournament that's going to be played. Well, the tournament involves uh, a number of communities, uh, mainly young people who have come under the refugee program to this country. Uh, many of them have come from war-torn areas and they had difficult experiences before they came. So the main objective of the tournament is A, to engage young people in a meaningful sporting activity and B, to give them a social link that they need and they see it as the only social link that they've got to the wider community. And child, tell me about your journey to Australia. Oh uh, yeah, it was a, a tough journey actually, you know? yeah, but every journey you know, has a, you know, toughness and a soft side, you know. You were from Sudan and then how did you make your way to Australia? Uh, I went to Egypt first, I stayed there for five years and uh, yeah, from those five years we came to Australia after that, you know, which it was, I would say like uh, the best choice we ever had, you know, because yeah. And you came with your family? Uh, tell me about your family. Uh, we came with the family, like, uh, yeah, I got like, with the whole family, you know, yeah. big actually massive family, eight, you know, members in the family. Yeah, you know, so, yeah. How long have you been in Australia? Five years and four months already. And yeah, my journey to Australia is just um, you know, like a dream, you know. I was in Thailand in Ravigi camp like 15 years, 15 years or so, and then I started after my father died, I decided to come to uh, Australia with my family, my mom, and my two young, my two sisters. Uh, I just uh, uh, came in 2009 by boat as an asylum seeker, uh, Christmas Island. I've been there for four months, and then I got my PR, and then uh, here, uh, straight away in Melbourne, and I shifted in the Dandenong. Uh, after, after a while, just uh, as I've been playing soccer in the overseas, that's why I just uh, decided to uh, to make a team. <laughs> what sort of issues do you see with these, uh, these boys and young men? Many of them have been traumatised before they came to this country. Uh, many of them have lost uh, close family members. And obviously sport uh, is being used as a, a coping mechanism. And uh, they're all from different teams. Tell me about the team's makeup. Uh, the teams have come uh, from the people of Burma, Afghanistan, um, Africa, Sudanese, uh, Burundians, Ethiopians, Eritreans, uh, Somalis, um, that's the, the, the African continent, and you've got uh, people from uh, Iraq, and also several fourth generation Australians who are participating in these teams, which is great. What choices do you have to make about how you're going to, uh, to spend your time in work and in, in sport? Yeah, you know, I would say like uh, the choices I have like, is very clear, you know. I you know, I get up in the morning, just go to work, and then after work, I have football and just play like, you know, just like everybody else, you know, just trying to make like connection with more people. So how has how has football been able to help you? Uh, football, it helped me a lot, you know, a lot through a lot of things, you know. It's like kind of you know, if you're a footballer, the ball become your one of your best friend, you know. It's like you move around with it, you know, going anywhere. Besides, we used to call it the universal language, you know. You go anywhere, you don't know the language, the football will speak. Just pass, pass, shoot, shoot, pass, pass, shoot, shoot. That's everybody gets it, you know? Yeah, so football is just beautiful, you know? You're in the refugee camp and your dad died? Uh, yes, actually. Died in a war, like Ukraine and Burmese, they were fighting. Yeah. It was actually a war, you know, between Ukraine and Burma at that time, but not this time anymore. And then, yeah, he died and I decided to come here, that's why. And, and where were you when he was fighting and when, uh, he, when he died? I was in the camp. He's in jungle somewhere. Uh, we, we couldn't, you know, we couldn't see him after he, he died. You know. yeah. Why did you try to come to Australia? Uh, because uh, there, uh, in our country, we're not safe there. Is a 
uh, basically I'm, uh, I belong from the Hazara community, uh, the, from the Ghazni, Afghanistan, and there we are not safe there. Uh, yeah, really, uh, uh, people been killing, and uh, nowadays building been killing, and some of them migrate to Pakistan, and there as well, Hazara people are just targeting. Uh, so that's the only reason we come here just to uh, protect ourselves. Well, I think through sport, they are developing communication skills, teamwork, uh, social skills, uh, uh, problem solving, um, leadership. Um, and, and as well as just interaction with a wider community, a, a language that they can speak with anyone and with everyone in the community. So obviously it is quite helpful. And how, how have you been treated by, uh, by Australians in the community generally? Um, are, are there things that you would like to see improved? Yeah, lots of things I would like to see improved, you know. I'm a bit rebellious and stuff like that, you know. There are lots of things, you know. I would say like, uh, like just giving people opportunities, you know, just to prove what they can do, you know. Because every, every, I believe everybody got like, you know, everybody's a genius in a way, like Albert Einstein used to say, you know. But you have to give them a chance to prove the, who they are, you know. Like works, uh, opportunities like football, or lots of stuff like that, you know. Anything that can bring the people together, you know, us to make us equal with the Australian people, you know, so we can share a happy life, you know. and. A happy ending too. Was school difficult while you while you were coming to terms with living in a new country? Of course, it is. It is difficult. A lot, lot, you know, a lot more difficult than refugee camp because the subject that I you know, never done before, never have seen before. So I have to, you know, organize everything, looking at the subject. You know, like, wow, this is hard. You know, not being able to communicate. It's, it's that a major problem? Yeah, it is. Come here, people say hi, and then you, I got no response from them. You know, like. Even they they say hi. I don't I don't say hi to them. I don't know what to say. You know, I want to say it, but you know, it's kind of hard. I like, mm, I just like mm, 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 something like this. Right. What was it like catching a boat to Australia? Uh, uh there was just uh, when we come there in the Jakarta, uh, we just uh, uh, we talked to smuggler, and uh, we just arranged the program, and uh, we come we come here. Yeah. And was there ever any doubt that that's what you wanted to do? Uh, not, so, not certain, not certain that. And uh, were you worried about what might happen when you reached Australia? Uh, yeah, I was not sure that uh, I may get, uh, you know, I, I may get my PR or something, any protection visa, something like that. I was in doubt. But when I arrived there and uh, when I got my visa, my PR, then uh, I was, I think that uh, I'm lucky and uh, I'm very thankful to the government of Australia. And what do you do with your time? What do you do for work and so on? Uh, for work, I've been working in the factory, but uh, nowadays I just study the AIMS education. Yeah. Yeah. What are you hoping to do? I just uh, I'm doing my level uh, in the level certificate three in the ESL, and after that uh, I might do some courses. Yeah. Do they talk to each other about their backgrounds, or is that even more difficult? Well, there there, are, there is a, a pre-game uh, and post-game uh, workshops where people are expressing their experiences and where we're trying to develop also their leadership skills, communication and problem solving skills. So it, we have a holistic approach to this. Uh, it's not just kicking a, a goal, it's, it's, it's about the human story and it's about building these young people for the future. How do you regard your home now, uh, your homeland in, in Sudan? Do you miss, do you miss people there or? Yeah, actually I do miss it for 12 years, man. I haven't been there before, you know, I haven't, I haven't been for 12 years here, you know. And to me, that's like long, long, you know. And I actually miss like a lot of people. I like, got cousins, friends, like long time, you know. Uh, I haven't seen them, you know. It's kind of sad, but you know, we were born to do that. We are, as a refugee, you know, you travel from country to country, you have no choice, you know. But I believe one day we're going to meet, you know. Do you miss your homeland? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I want to go back there. Might be this year or next year. Yeah, I want to just see what happened in there and then what's changed, you know, how people live. Because nowadays, Tom had Shang and then people had Shang as well. So, five years already, I ha haven't been back there. So, yeah, I just want to go back there and see what happened. Yeah. Well, thanks for your time. Good luck in the tournament. Hope you score some goals. Ah, uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I, I might, I might, yeah. What's your team like for the tournament? Uh, it is uh, by the name of Denong Shox uh, Soccer Club. Yeah. And uh, we just uh, will play next week here in the tournament. Have you got lots of talent this year? Uh, uh, not uh, not uh, skills, 
But uh, yeah, in the game, in the game, I, I got his, his skills. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, good luck for the tournament. Thanks for telling us Thank about you. your story. Thank you too. My pleasure. And shouldn't you be playing basketball? Basketball, maybe in the next life, like I used to say all the time. You know, next life, you know, when when I grow taller like that, you know, I'll be playing basketball. Now it's football time, and never gonna change. You know, uh, I should. I tried basketball before. I used to dunk and everything. I played a little bit, but I wasn't interested. Yeah. Because I love football, you know. Yeah. When you love football, football loves you too, you know. It's kind of the best attraction you can ever have, you know. Yeah. yeah. So, Good on you. Thanks. Good luck for the tournament. No problem. Thanks to you too. Thanks to everybody who's watching too.